Hello, everybody. This is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com, and I'm coming at you with a, another answer to a question that I've been getting a lot recently. Uh, and here I am in the home office. <clears throat> um, and so I've gotten a couple different versions of this question, but we're going to call it to grid or not to grid your GPR survey. And, you know, I've gotten this in, in, in a couple different ways. I've gotten, should your grid be square or can it be some other shape? I've gotten this question as, should you use a grid or should you use a GPS unit to record your locations? Uh, I've gotten this in another question, which was, should you use a grid or should you just not use a grid, right? It, not irrelevant of a GPS. Should you just take it out and uh, your GPR and push it around and mark <clears throat> anything that you find in the subsurface? And so I'm kind of going to rope all this together pretty quickly. But should you grid or should you not to grid? And the answer to the question is yes. So should you grid? Yes. Should you not grid? Yes. And why am I saying yes to both of those? Should you GPS? Yes. You do what you can when you can do it. So ideally, a grid is going to be uh, very beneficial because it's going to give you the best locational accuracy and it's the most systematic way to collect data. Uh, uh, and I think your data will be you know, as, as crisp as, as possible. Uh, does your grid have to be a square? No, it certainly doesn't have to be a square. If you can can make a, a square grid, you're going to have a lot of benefit later when you're doing post-processing. However, I've seen grids that were circular. There's an excellent article in Fast Times. Fast Times is the uh, leading near-surface geophysics uh, magazine, trade magazine in North America. And you, you can go get it. It's completely free. You go to eegs.org. Uh, EEGS.org. It's produced by the Environmental and Engineering Geophysics Society, uh, and you can get fast times right there. But there was the reason I say it and bring it up is there was a study in there that showed tree root mapping, where they did a circular grid, and they just went around and around and around and around the tree uh, in very tight intervals to create a a fantastic model of the root mat of that tree. And so it was it was a, a great way to set up a grid. And in that case, it didn't have to be square. I've never done it that way, but it certainly showed that you can do it that way. Um, what happens if you set up a grid and, and it's not a square, but you try to do it as a square and it happens to be a rhombus? That's right. I said rhombus. And if it happens to be a rhombus, that's okay. You can use a GPS unit and mark all four corners of your rhombus and when you plot that in an ArcGIS, you know, or some or, or, or some other GIS program, it's going to shift your grid so it's actually on Earth where it was collected. So that's okay, even if it's not completely uh, uh, accurate. Uh, it's still better to do that if you, if you can, and there are ways to correct for that later. Um, should you use a GPS unit and just put it into your into your GPR? Yeah, and the benefit of that is that if you don't, if you do that and you don't set up a grid, um, it, it's a big time saver, right? And if you don't have enough person power, right, enough human beings working on your site to uh, uh, to help you build a grid and carry out a grid survey, um, then just putting into a GPS unit is important. But be aware: do not use a Garmin GPS with a plus or minus of five meters in order to collect your GPR data. It has to be very precise. I mean, at least really you should be getting subfoot accuracy with your GPS uh, unit. And so if you have a GPS, by all means, use it. If you don't have a GPS or you don't have a GPR that involves GPS, can you do a GPR survey? Or if you don't have a GPR that integrates with GPS, can you do a GPR survey not as a grid and not with the GPS? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. If you have the equipment and you have some time to use it, use it. If you're on the site, you're, let's say you're going and doing your utility survey, and you have it in the truck, and you have 15 minutes, break that thing out. Pull your GPR out of your truck and use it. Even if it's for 15 minutes, go around and you know go over what you did with your EM locator and make sure your depths are correct, right? Go over what you did with your EM locator for pinpoint accuracy um, instead of plus or minus 18 inches, right? I mean, a GPR can give you pinpoint accuracy in X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if you have the time, even 15 minutes to use it, bring it out, unfold it. Even if it doesn't uh, um, record your, your data, even if you can only see it on the screen and do screenshots, bring it out and use it. 
You have it. You paid for it. Use it. And it's a worthwhile technology because it gives so much information and can add so much to whatever you're doing. So should you set up a grid? Yes, when you can, uh, um, assuming that time, person power permits it, right? And that, that you're, let's say it's a contract, uh, um, you know, that the money is there that to, to permit it. If you have a GPS unit, use it, whether it's, it's um, logging in the four corners of your grid or you integrate it into your GPR unit, um, use it. Uh, or if you don't have either the capability to do either of those, still bring it out and use it. You have it. It's important technology. Um, this is something that, that we go over actually in, in, in one of our courses at learngpr.com and it's worthwhile to go check it out. It's called GPR Basics. So you can go over there and take a look at, at the lessons that are in there. Uh, but this is something that we talk about when we talk about survey strategy, right? What's the best way to use GPR? And sometimes using a GPR is secondary. But if you have it, and you can use it for 15 minutes, then absolutely use it. Thank you so much. I appreciate your attention as always. Uh, if you got some value out of this, please share it around. If you haven't done so yet, go to learngpr.com and sign up for our free GPR introductory training video. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks.